What's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, what we're going to do is finish up our series on building a metronome and actually get our metronome to play in a sample accurate way. So before we get started, I just wanted to let you know about all the rewards that we're offering on our Patreon. So we're offering t-shirts, uh, hoodies, and audio programmer stickers. And you can uh, get these rewards by contributing to the audio programmer. So if you like these tutorials and you're finding them useful, uh, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the audio programmer. And let's go ahead and get started. So just to review what we did in our last tutorial, we have a sound uh, that's cowbell.wave and we've loaded that sound and now we're ready to play it and we want that to play uh, out on the beat in a similar way to the metronome that you might see in any sort of DAW. Uh, so we have a problem though, which is that if we look at our get next audio block function, we have our buffer information that's coming in via our audio callback in our main component. And at the moment, this information is coming in in 512 uh, sample chunks. So that's the size of our buffer. And what we what we have a problem with here is that what if we have a situation which is going to be most situations where we want our sound to actually start playing in the middle of this 512 sample count so at the moment we're counting in chunks of 512 and that if we need the sound to start playing in the middle of one of those callbacks if our calculation for our um, for our bpm is says that we need a sound the the sound or the click to happen in between this callback uh, we don't have anything in place at the moment that counts how far in we need to start the to start the sound start playing the sound and so we're going to go ahead and implement that now in this tutorial so most of our work is going to be here in between lines 51 and 55 in this conditional statement so we have uh, uh, something that we set up in an earlier tutorial where we said okay so if we know that we're in a callback where we know that the click is going to happen before what we did was we just consoled out and we said click and uh, and we have the total number of samples in there but what if we want to get a little bit more specific than that and we want to actually know what sample that we actually want to start the sound at that we actually want to start that we actually want to say that okay the metronome is supposed to click on this particular sample and that's what we're going to implement here so the first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a way of counting the samples in the buffer size so we could do that using a for loop here so we could do for uh, uh, auto uh, we'll call this variable sample equals zero sample is less than uh, the buffer size so we've created this variable earlier called buffer size this could be const as well because we're just reading from this value we're not actually changing it okay so sample is less than the buffer size and then we could just iterate through that so now we could take this where it's supposed to click, put it in here. And now we have a situation where we say, okay, well, we want a way to figure out which sample that we actually need to uh, start playing here as we are going from zero to our buffer size, which in this case is 512 samples. So we could create a variable, uh, we'll call it const, because once again, we're just reading from this from this value so we can call it const auto time to start playing equals uh, so let's think about this so we're going to have a interval uh, that's going to give us the number of samples so let's just comment this out really quick and let's just let's just use a test case here to actually figure this out so if I hit, uh, if I just build this quickly, and then we have some information that we could con that we're consoling out, 
at the moment. I'm just going to play this really quick and then let's just look at the information that we have below here. So we can see here that samples remaining is a bit misleading in the fact that it actually is going up rather than down. So maybe some time I'll, re I'll, uh, I'll actually uh, rename that variable, but it's actually going from 512 all the way up and it's a modulo function. So it actually goes all the way up to, uh, and we didn't even, we just stopped it immediately, so it didn't even get all the way up to 44,100. So since we're working at 60 beats a minute at the moment, our update interval is 44,100 samples. So the idea is that once we get to 44,100 samples, that the sound would start playing, and then every 44,100 samples, the sound would play again and again. Right? And that's what we're supposed to reflect here in the... Um, in the update interval. So what we need is we need to say, okay, when we get to a point where we need to get very specific about where we want the, the sample to start playing, that would mean that we should have um, less uh, M samples remaining would be less than the buffer size. So what we need to do is we need to say, okay, we need to look at the M update interval, right? So that's how many samples we're playing in between each, uh, how, many, how many samples are playing in between each sound. So if we're going with one second, it'd be 44,100 uh, samples. And then we could say, uh, if we subtract M samples remaining, remember our misleading our misleading variable name here that's going from zero to, in this case, 44,100, right? Then we could say, okay, well, if we subtract how many values we have left, then what we could do is we can then go in on the granular level where we're counting the samples in our in our buffer size, and we're counting from zero to 512 in our buffer size, and then we need then we're going to actually know where in in this uh, in this count from zero to 512 that we're actually going to need to start playing the sample. So we could say if the sample, which is from our for loop, is greater than or equal to time to start playing. then we know that we need to start the sam we need to start the sample actually it's just double equals here so so if the sample is equal to the time to start playing right which will be from from zero which will be a number that's less than 512 then we start playing the sample right so now what we need to do is we need to pull in our actual function to actually get the next audio block to play the sample, which is here. So this is the next, get next audio block function. And this needs to be buffer to fill which is just our buffer from that we're getting in and get next audio block. So that should be fine. And what we want to do here is so we have a we have a situation where we are playing the sample we we're, we're doing get next audio block but we're only doing that for one sample. So that's a problem because that's only going to happen for one sample. So you're just going to get a short little, a short little like kind of click, and then the sound isn't going to complete playing if the sound is a bit longer. So what we need to do is first thing is we want to reset the sound to the beginning every time that we're going to get ready to start playing it again. So we could do p metronome sample 
and then arrow operator set next read position to zero. So that just resets the, the sample back to the beginning. Then it starts to play. And then what we could do down here is we could actually look and say, okay, well, if it's if the sample has started playing, then we know that it's not at zero anymore. So what so what we could do is we could make a condition here and say if the metronome sample get next read position, so we'll get the read position. And if it's not equal to zero, so if it's started playing already, then we know it's already started playing. And then what we could do is we could actually set it to go ahead and continue getting the sound that it needs and putting it into the buffer, right? So that's useful because what could happen, there may be situations where the sound needs to start in one uh, callback, but then needs to finish in the next or in subsequent callbacks. And this function is what enables that to happen. So it's making sure that, okay, if the sample's already started playing, let's go ahead and play the sample until it's finished. Okay, uh, so that should be fine. And so I think that's, I think that's everything that we need to start. So let's go ahead and try this out. And let me just put a little bit more information here in this console out to see how, uh, to see if this is doing what we want it to do. So we could do, um, let's see, time to start playing. Uh, plus M samples remaining. That should be 44,100, fingers crossed, unless I've done my calculations wrong. Okay, so the interval should be 44,100. Oh, actually we need, um, I'm wrong here. So this should be samples. The, our sample number plus our samples plus the samples remaining. So we got number of samples remaining and then it should be the sample that we're in plus that should equal 44,100, I think, uh, unless I've done something wrong. And we should hear a sound this time when we play. Okay, so we've heard a sound. Now we're gonna to go to where click is. And we can see that our update interval is 44,100 samples and where it actually clicked is at 44,100 samples. So that looks like that's working correctly. So let's just try a different, a different BPM, right? Let's try something weird like, uh, one one thirty two, right? Let's just try that. And let's see if our calculations are working correctly. And let's go back to click. And we can see that the update interval is twenty thousand forty five samples and it clicked at 20,045 samples. So that looks like that's working correctly. Now what we could do is we could get rid of all this console, uh, console out stuff because we do not want this happening in our call block or else it may cause stuttering and that sort of, uh, that sort of business and we don't want that happening. Okay, another thing we could do is I could actually take this, I'm going to get rid of the high res timer here. I'm going to put this in our constructor so that this happens just when the object's created uh, because the high resolution timer is actually unnecessary. We don't actually even need it. Uh, that's only, we would only need a timer if the user was changing the, was changing the, uh, 
the actual BPM while the app is actually happening, which is not happening in this case. But, uh, you know, even if it was, you don't need a high resolution uh, timer for that. No need for that. So we can get rid of that. We can get rid of this start timer. And we can try again. Just make sure that it works correctly. And here we are. And we can see that it plays just fine and is playing at the right tempo. So that's where I'm going to end this tutorial. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this metronome series. And if you have any questions or you think there's anything that needs to be better or that could, that could be better, or if you have improvements to this, I'd love to hear your suggestions. So feel free to comment uh, in the video below. Uh, and that's where I'm going to end this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.